Welcome to Dark Knight Films Reviews and another Hammer Productions Night. Tonight, I will be reviewing The Vampire Lovers, released in 1970. The Vampire Lovers stars Ingrid Pitt, Pippa Steele, Madeline Smith, Peter Cushing, George Cole, Don Adams, Kate O'Mara, Douglas Vilmer, John Finch, Ferdy Main, John Forbes Robertson, Harvey Hall, and Janet Key. The Vampire Lovers was directed by Roy Ward Baker. And the screenplay was based on the story Carmilla, written by Sheridan Lafanu. And it was adapted for a screenplay by Tudor Gates. And uh, Gates does a great job of adapting this story. But thankfully, Hammer retains all of the lesbian aspects of the original Carmilla story. Um, they didn't let um, the studio heads there um, influence them. They stuck to their guns and said, no, this is not how we are making this. This is how it was originally written in the original story this is based on. So this is not our doing. This is his doing. So we're just adapting it and we're not going to whitewash it. And I like that. I like the fact that they did that. Um, Ingrid Pitt is gorgeous as Marcella slash Carmilla slash Marcala Karnstein. And uh, she's really good in this. I mean, um, and uh, unlike my previous review where um, I complained about some of the nudity in there, um, this one, the nudity in this film is well placed and, and well executed because it is Ingrid Pitt, it's Madeline Smith, it's uh, Pippa Steele, it's adult actors. It is actors that are of adult age. None of these characters are played by someone who is a young kid, a young girl. So, um, I don't mind that. I don't mind it at all. I mean, uh, who wouldn't? Um, it's Ingrid Pitt. <laughs> but um, the scenes feel real and not forced. It's not like, hey, we're just trying to do this just to, you know, push the boundaries and, you know, be controversial. It, did, it didn't do that because of that, I don't think. I think this is... Based on the story, this is how it was in the story. And they just stayed true to the way this was. Um, the character that Peter Cushing plays, uh, General Spielsdorf, um, I don't like the fact that he's, he's in it right at the beginning, pretty good. And then he just disappears for a large chunk of this movie. Um, and then resurfaces, thankfully, at the end. I was thinking that, what the fuck, man? That's it? That's all we get of Peter Cushing? You know, um, George Cole is pretty good as Roger Morton, and he better be because he was basically, you know, coming in and taking over for um, Peter Cushing after he went off on his own. Then you also have the awesome opening sequence with Douglas Wilmer, which comes full circle by the end when you get the older version of Douglas Wilmer's Baron character coming back in to help Peter Cushing and George Cole to try and bring an end to the Karnstein legacy. So, um... All performances in this are really good, but there are some problems that I that I just watching this film 
again, I, I had issues with. Um, I didn't mind it that, you know, a character is starting off protective of her ward. Kate O'Mara plays her character of Mademoiselle Paraboy very well. And she is wanting to take care of her ward, Emma, played by Madeline Smith, and she's defensive of her. She's protective of her. And I knew at some point that Ingrid Pitt's Carmilla was going to eventually try to put the mind whammy on her and put her under her spell. But the way it is executed could have been done much better. It could have been so much better if it would have just been more this seductive look into my eyes kind of a thing that Hammer has done so well before already. Um, but instead, there's this weird scene. I want you to have it. So, a uh, brooch can put someone under your control and make them do what you want them to do? What? What the fuck is that? Um, another thing I didn't like about this one was the whole... Um, Carmilla is seen numerous times passing in front of mirrors and uh, she fully shows a reflection. And she's also able to go out in the daylight. This is something that should have been rethought. Because it does not work within any of the vampire mythos that I fully support. So I did not like the fact that Carmilla passes by mirrors numerous times in this and she can go out in the daylight. They only did it when there's a little line here. Carmilla, why do you always sit in the shade? The sun is too bright for me. It hurts my eyes. Mm. Yeah, she just likes to stay in the shade. Yeah, as long as the vampire stays in the shade um, in sunlight, they can go out there. It's fine. They just can't look at the sun. Oh, bullshit. Come on. That was just stupid to me. Um, but not only was, uh, did I think Kate O'Mara, um, her character was done a little wrong in this thing, but also Harvey Hall, um, as Renton. Now he, he is portrayed really smart in this, figuring out that there's something wrong and that Mademoiselle is not acting herself and she is not trying to help her ward anymore for some reason and uh he goes against her wishes and brings in the doctor to help emma um and then in a stupid thing that they make him just basically assume that mademoiselle is the vampire she's the evil one and Carmilla, this person that just came in there, and that it isn't until she came in that Mademoiselle started acting strangely. He trusts her and lets her seduce him. I didn't like that too much. Um, it just made that character look stupid after he was shown to be so smart. Um, but, yeah, um, overall, this is uh, one of the um, best in this Karnstein series from Hammer. Um, there was uh, three films in this series, um, this being the first, and uh, this is one of the best of the series. It's not the best, but it's one of the best. So... My review of The Vampire Lovers from 1970. I will give this film 
an 8.5 out of 10. This is a really good um, vampire film if you overlook some of the things they screwed up with the vampire mythos and also the um, bad ways of getting characters to fall under Carmilla's spell. So, um, what do you guys think? Do you agree with my review? Do you disagree? Let me know in the comments down below because I really want to know what you guys think of this film. Is this your favorite in the Karnstein trilogy? Let me know. And as usual, if you enjoyed this review, do not forget to like, share, and subscribe because it really does help this channel out a lot. All right, so hope you will join me tomorrow for Action Movie Night. Until then, thank you for watching.